But we all know the power of yeah. not just the internet, but social media. It's funny you say that, though, because it's like, say if Dave, the he's probably, say Dave the plumber, is probably posting <laughs> I don't know why I use that the most example. random, you know, the most There's amateur no pictures with yeah. nothing in it. Mm-hmm. But if he actually went on there and done a bit of a live, being himself, showing his expertise, you know, showcasing what he's done today, this was the before, this was the after he would get so much more leads from his Instagram page. And I think social media allows you to really bring out your brand's personality. And you're proving your expertise by being that subject matter expert. Mm. Well, Karen might see Dave and think, well, he's done a really good job there. I know him because he's local Mm. from social media. I'm more likely to pick him because I've seen what he does on a daily day-to-day basis. Same with B2B. People will buy into you. Now, via LinkedIn as a social media platform, you talk about your expertise on a daily basis. Well, when it comes to a, that company needing someone, well, they're automatically going to think of you because they've seen you on a daily basis talking yeah. about what you're doing mm-hmm. and highlighting what you're good at. And I remember having a phone call in 2020 with Lynn Odlin, the Cobra Kai director. Mm-hmm. He's, a, he's a good guy. <laughs> yeah. And um, he said to me, he said, all of these buddies out in L.A., get to a certain point in their business, you know, they're, they're emotionally attached, they're, they're in their comfort yeah. zone, they don't know how to pivot, and they get stuck because they don't want to outsource, they don't want to leverage their time to work on maybe parts of the business they're good at, they're trying to run everything, yeah. mm-hmm. and they burn themselves out. And they're the types of people that don't want to learn anything new, but they're stuck at what first worked for them. But sometimes that that doesn't mean it's always going to work. Hey guys, thanks for joining us on our podcast. Uh, we have Alex, Anna, Ryan and myself joining us today. We're going to be going over some of the topics that you guys have asked in the uh, DMs, but also some of the things we want to discuss, which are currently trending topics as well. Um, a massive one and something that we're all involved in and something that we uh, obviously strive towards within perfection is building our social media, either as a brand or our personal persona. Uh, and I think it's Something that we we constantly see evolving, and I think it's something that people have got to be aware of, is the evolving of social media and how you can be adaptable with it. I think one thing that we constantly speak about, Ryan, is how you've changed your style of content to, you've tested a lot of angles and a lot of concepts within your personal branding, as well as obviously change as well. Um, do you see the evolving obviously, within marketing, obviously how you develop yourself with personal as well? Yeah, I feel like I feel like the better the social media, the more of a network opportunity you have. I think the more you brand yourself, the more people reach out to you, people that you never think would reach out to you, people that, you know, you're like, wow, I used to watch that guy on TV, you know, when I was young. <laughs> and, and then they know people and they know people and they know people. So this goes back years, you know, I'm talking 2019. When I really saw the impact of having good content be incredible, um, I would then start networking with people that had opened doors. And now we work with some huge influencers uh, within Change. Um, and that all come off the back of my content, my personal brand, my credibility, just my social presence in general. Yeah. And I f- you mentioned it there as well. Um, just to, sorry to cut in. Um, people know people. Uh, and I think it's massive that sometimes you forget and like the, the circles that people are in, you wouldn't realise these people know people uh, and the doors that it opens for yourself. And like I said, I think if you respond, like, it may be even someone who's not got any followers or something like that, but they may be well connected. You might mm-hmm. not know it. Um, and I think it's how you present yourself is every message you send is your brand. 100% the amount of DMs I've received saying, Ryan, would you jump on my podcast? Ryan, would you be interested in doing business with me? And these are people that have hundreds of thousands, if not millions of followers. So if you look at Martin Ford as an example, you know, we work closely with Martin Ford. We helped him create a clothing line, a CBD company. Um, he's now doing another business with us. And all the doors open there from meeting other influencers. Now these people are offering us opportunities and making us more credible, you know, to be able to, you know, level up and and who who else does Martin Ford know and who else do they know? And it's just an endless level up with these with these types of people. And uh it's a perfect example of your network being your net worth. But it always comes down to your foundations. And I was saying to Anna and Alex before the podcast started, the amount of businesses and I know you want to touch on this, Anna, with yeah. the whole branding, but the amount of businesses that don't have any credibility. So let's use 
Dave, your local plumber who has a van, and he thinks it's as simple as opening up an Instagram, posting average content, doesn't know what an engagement group is, doesn't know how to market. Yeah. And he wonders why it's not working. He puts his 30 mm. hashtags in his, in, in, in his <laughs> caption and he's wondering why he's getting one to two yeah. likes. I, I just feel like even though, you know, we're in 2023 right now, people still don't understand the power of social media. But I don't feel, yeah. I feel half of it, people are just not taking it seriously. And I think the other half is they just don't understand how powerful mm. social media is. There's people out there that I talk to on a daily basis that, you know, do £10,000 a day just through social media. you got people out there that do £100,000 a day on social media. Now, if you used to tell Dave the plumber who, who drives his van every day and thinks uploading bad content is going to work, he wouldn't believe you. He'll think it's complete bullshit. But we all know the power of yeah. not just the internet, but social media. It's funny you say that, though, because it's like, say if Dave the... He's probably... Say Dave the plumber is probably posting... <laughs> I don't know why I use that The most example. random, you know, the most... There's amateur no pictures with yeah. nothing in it mm -hmm. but if he actually went on there and done a bit of a live being himself showing his expertise you know showcasing what he's done today this was the before this was the after he would get so much more leads yeah. from his yeah. instagram page and i think social media allows you to really bring out your brand's personality yeah whereas on a website you know, it is what it is. It's the text, it's the images, it's the videos. Whereas social media allows you to bring out that personality. You can bring it out with influencers. You can talk on stories. So your audience is really being like, oh my God, that feels like me or yeah, I do yeah. that. Yeah. Or you can I relate really, more. Yeah, yeah, I really I resonate I don't, I don't, with that. And then that creates that engagement and then they follow you and then it's like I'm going to order from them I'm going to yeah, tell them yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to and tell my friends it. about and them yeah, we've all yeah we've all I don't done think it. it doesn't matter what concept of marketing you're in if you're in personal marketing in B2B B2C the the idea of branding and branding creates an element of trust people buy into people uh, and I think there's so I, when I was younger I used to do sale door to door sales uh, and ninety percent of the reason why I had a sale is someone bought into me. I could tell mm -hmm. straight away if they're engaged with me or if they weren't engaged with me. You can tell within the first ten seconds if they're going to buy from you. Um, and I think this probably works hand in hand with Alex. Well, so you're you're more benefited by the no's than what you are by the yeses. You learn more about the no's within, and this obviously primarily goes into B two B. But you learn more about the nose. You learn more about, okay, do I need to change my pitch? Do I need to change my personality? Do I need to change my approach? Um, than what you would do with the yeses. If you were successful at everything you would do. Or do you need to change your audience? Because a lot of be, people yeah, yeah. don't know actually who they're targeting. So they're talking, yeah. Yeah. and because they've never established who their audience is, yeah. which is what I say to a lot of members, if you don't know who you're talking to, you're not talking to anybody. And, and how can you become relatable? Yeah. And you were talking about this the other day to me, Alex, about you know being relatable like when approaching businesses in B2B. Yeah. Like if, if you don't have a target audience. Imagine doing B2B with a no target audience, Alex. And, it, and equally... You touched on it, but the, the personal brand doesn't matter if you, like I said before, doing B2B, B2C. If you can build that, like, like we say, Dave, good old Dave. Yeah, okay. Good old Dave. Sorry for there's any <laughs> Dave, sir. Plumber's Dave. 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 Yeah. 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 I mean, imagine me? if your name was Karen. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> it would be worse. Yeah. If, Dave you, and Karen. if you're a plumber called Dave and you're proving your expertise by being that subject matter expert, mm. well, Karen might see Dave and yeah. think, well, he's done a really good job there. I know him because he's local mm -hmm. from social media. I'm more likely to pick him because I've seen what he does on a daily day day to day basis. Same with B2B. People will buy into you now via LinkedIn as a social media platform. You talk about your expertise on a daily basis. Well, when it comes to a that company needing someone, well, they're automatically gonna think of you because they've seen you on a daily basis talking yeah. about what you're doing mm -hmm. and highlighting what you're good at mm -hmm. from all aspects. And it's a very, like, modern way of business. I think if you look, like, 20 or 50 years ago, it would be frowned upon to, like, be yourself. Yeah. And, like, gloating, you've mentioned it before, yeah. like, you know, you need to be in a suit, you need to be really professional. Yeah. But nowadays, people love the real you. That's why, like, reality TV is so popular because... People yeah. want to see things that they relate to. Yeah. And whether that's with a product, with a service, 
they're ultimately buying into you or your business. And when you're creating a brand, it's almost like your personality needs to go into your brand as well. Or if it's not you, it's to be like, what do I want my business to be? There's so many concepts in the world now that you're very, very, very unlikely going to have a sole concept. Mm. Some other brand is going to sell the same product, the same idea. The reason why, like I said, the reason why they're buying from you is your branding. I'm they sure. like you. They bought into your mm-hmm. branding. They may have, um, and your branding doesn't just stop at what you present within your images or your text. It's what your customers say about you. It's what you are responding back to your customers and stuff like that. And I think it's important. And one of the biggest things, and you mentioned it before, is knowing your audience. Yeah. One thing that kills, this goes all the way through from when you're first starting all the way up to some of the bigger brands that have worked as well. People are very ignorant in adaptable and have been adaptable into who they want to target. Mm. They're quite set in the mindset of, okay, I don't want to target over fifties because that's not the, that's not the angle I want to go for. Now in a business, whoever's going to get your sales is the audience that you want to target. You can't be ignorant to the fact that, okay, I want to be a young brand. I don't want to target 20 to 30 year old. You may not be getting sales there. Why do you think that? Do you think that's because people are stubborn? You think stubborn setting their ways, comfort zone, I think it's it's they don't know how to adapt their business mindset, and I don't think they they may choose aesthetic and aesthetically pleasing over content that's more presentable to the audience that is more relatable to them. Mm. So um, I've got I've got a good example of this. So when I first started my travel business, naturally we thought eighteen to thirty five year old trips to Bali. Right, you're going to think it's a gap year student is going to be coming on our trips. Mm. So all our marketing was pushing towards that sort of, you know, cocktails. This is going to be the time of your life. <laughs> yeah. Turns out... Anna's interested. Anna's, <laughs> turns out going. it was mid-twenties female who were in a, a full-time job. Single. Teachers. No, not necessarily. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So full-time. We had a lot of couples come on as well. Oh, I know. Um, so full-time job. So we had to then basically pivot and change all our branding mm-hmm. and marketing and even our how we even how we, how we even talk on social media mm. because that's one thing I know you you yeah. preach it all the time is how people actually talk about their products to yeah, people. Yeah. It's we had to completely pivot and obviously we're off the back of that we were much more successful. But it just shows that don't be emotion uh, don't be too emotive when it comes to your product and and. Mm. Or, or say, sorry, stuck in your way. Yeah. Because or you being need to... emotionally attached yeah. to yeah. what you think is going to work. And I think that is really hard when you're starting a business and you're like, this is how it's going to be. This is who I'm going to target. I want it to be this way. And you, you develop it all with the vision that you have. But sometimes yeah. you have to be flexible. Yeah. You have to adapt. You have because to... like you've said, you can think it's going to work one way, but it's not. And just because it's not working for that period of time, it doesn't mean it's not going to work. It just means you've trialled and tested that. Yeah. And now we know that's not working, but these people are coming through. Let's adapt our branding. Let's adapt our strategies to direct this audience. A lot of these same people that you're talking about here as well are the type of people that will never leverage their time as yeah. well. Mm. Uh, and and I remember having a phone call in 2020 with Lynn Odlin, the Cobra Kai director. Mm. He's, a, he's a good guy. <laughs> yeah. And um, he said to me, he said, all of these buddies out in LA get to a certain point in their business, you know, they're, they're emotionally attached, they're, they're in their comfort zone, yeah. they don't know how to pivot. And they get stuck because they don't want to outsource. They don't want to leverage their time to work on maybe parts of the business they're good at. They're trying to run everything yeah. mm. and they burn themselves out. And they're the types of people that don't want to learn anything new. They're stuck at what first worked for them. But sometimes that that doesn't mean it's always going to work. And, you know, it's, and I think- it's really hard when you're new to business mm. yeah. trying to accept that you're not going to be able to do everything. You can't get the expertise of everything and you are going to have to invest your money into specific things because it's impossible. We have an actual example between me and Ryan. Like The the, the way that me and Ryan started for speaking was I was working previously for an agency uh, and then... I think it was like 2020 or 2021, there was an iOS 14 update, which hmm. meant that um, the pixel data and all data was uh, was uh, was lost. Um, and Ryan had his profile online. It was still quite a big profile online. I messaged Ryan and said, okay, this is what I'm doing. What are your thoughts? Do you have any ideas on how you're adapting towards it? And uh, that was the spark of the conversation. I went to Ryan asking him what his ideas was. And we got on a call and we discussed it. And it was like, okay, 
how how can Ryan leverage his time to better change online? And it was okay. He gets a lot of marketing questions. Can I come in and help him with the marketing element and, and build that way? And I think that that's a real life example towards change. And I think it's the same reason why Ryan's and I, uh, the the perfect example within leveraging your time and understanding how you're not you don't always have to be the smartest person in the room, mm. but you can be the most resourceful person in the room. Yeah. And I think resources is more than, than smart because you can be clever in one element. So I'm clever in, in Facebook ads, meta ads. Mm. Alex is clever in, in B2B marketing. I, I'm absolutely going zero on B2B marketing. So it's it depends. But I, whereas Ryan, you now have a concept of, because you've, you've brought us all in, you have an expertise and you can go say, okay, this is my resource, this is my resource within, within one. So it's like, how you leverage your time, mm. but how you become resourceful in it. Um, and in turn, that you may not be the independent topic, the smartest person in the room, mm. but you are the most resourceful, which makes you the most valuable person in the room. So but, your network, what you're saying yeah. there is a network <laughs> will open more doors than a university degree ever will. And that's exactly what you're saying. It's my network. You guys are part of my but network. What, yeah. If anything to do with branding, I know someone who's yeah, better exactly, than anybody yeah. else that I know. Same as you. And uh, sorry, Alex. <laughs> and when I had that phone call with you, I was at the time, I, I'd like to believe I was very good with ads. You know, I did Facebook yeah. ads every day. Mm -hmm. And when Anthony started talking, I was thinking, well, hang on a minute, this guy's next level, you know, and, and I'm not ashamed to admit that. And I think this is where just going back to like the whole business side, I think this is where a lot of businesses start and then stop because they don't, they can't admit that someone may know yeah. more about their business mm -hmm. than they do because they create a business, you know? So I think, I think when you're open-minded and you, you, you say, okay, look, Anna's been doing branding for years and years and years. I've only started this business for two years. Anna may know more than me. When you become, when you open your mind to new possibilities and new people, you will also grow as well. It's how you scale. And, and you're going to build a network because Anna, when you come through, maybe you know somebody else yeah. that can benefit me. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so I think leveraging our time, I'm able to spend my time at the things I'm better at. Mm -hmm. I'm able to focus more on the networking side, which your network is your network, mm -hmm. like I said already. Why would I do Facebook and teach the members how to do Facebook where I've got no issue doing mm -hmm. if I know a guy that's better than me? Mm -hmm. And most people don't admit this. Yeah. Most people well, are too, the, the, no, I'm very good. The shame uh, yeah. of it is, is like there's a lot of people that you'll see that are like just exceptional at what they do. So it might be a hairdresser. It might be maybe an electrician or so, something, you know, basic like that but they can never monetize on their expertise because they don't have the knowledge yeah. to yeah. be able yeah. to sell online, to market. But and that's also the problem though, Anna, because yeah. where they're so exceptional, they, they don't want to step yeah, back. Exactly. Yeah. It's like, I wouldn't say obsessed is the word, but they're just stuck. So yeah. there is so many cons to that. I think when, you, when you're more open-minded and you say, oh, I'm good at that, but you know what? I need to leverage my time because time makes money. Yeah. People that work nine to fives doing 50 hours a week, they're very limited to what they can make online. They can do it. They yeah. can do it in their spare time. You see members come through and change their life and do 60 hours, 70 yeah. hours a week. But they're limited when they first begin on how much work they can put in. And when someone's so exceptional at what they do, the chances are they probably do 50, 60, 70 hours a week mm -hmm. because they're so exceptional, which yeah. now they're hitting a roadblock. They're, they're, there's no, yeah, not much further can't. you can yeah, go. Yeah, they they're can't go they're too further. busy being in the business of their niche, aren't Absolutely, they? Absolutely. And yeah. it's one thing that I get all the time, especially with members, we jump on a call with a member and I'd be like, right, what you need to do is that. And they're like, how do you know? How did you just say that? I, it's <laughs> taken me ages. Said, yeah. Because I'm not in the business, so I can take a. I literally, every member that I speak to, I'm like, they're saying they've got, like, oh, I want to go into B2B. I'm like, mm. speak to Alex <laughs> because you'll say something to him and he will just bounce off you and be like, okay, from there, you could do this. Yeah, because yeah. every, everything I usually speak about is like about thinking about outside the box. And we've got a prime example of Martin Jeffries, who's a massive B2B deal with mm. Fox's Biscuits, yeah. who's doing a Valentine's. So he was selling car cleaning products was that a six figure deal it was i think over 70k so yeah he'd done well, he'd done, he done, right that. Figures, he yeah. done a right of that so what it was is he was like struggling because i remember at the time he was having to stick to certain postcodes with what he was doing mm. and he was like um i think it was bradford away and he was like look you know i've got these companies car you know i keep approaching car cleaning companies and they don't want the product etc like that and said all right so what business have you got around there and he mentioned a few airports um football stadiums something like that and he mentioned fox's biscuits like, okay fine so he was like, yeah, they, they've got loads of vans and stuff like that. So, well, there's your answer. And he's like, what do you mean? He's like, <laughs> well, they've got loads of vans. So that's meaning 
branding needs to be clear on the on each van mm. so approach them mm. and he was like how, how did you know that i was like well i'm not in your day-to-day business i'm not trying to yeah. think narrow not narrow-minded looking from outside the box yeah, thinking outside the box that. it's quite it's not easy but when you're so hy- hyper focused into let's just say facebook ads and that's all you're thinking about is facebook ads and how to do yeah. that yeah. you forget that organic or instagram or other <laughs> yeah. co- components but can that's assist again you with that why it's so important to speak to someone that isn't on your radar like yeah. your expertise is b2b theirs isn't and you're just opening all of their opportunities look at them. the amount of ideas that we've come up with alex i was saying this to alex two hours ago yeah how many ideas we've come up with on this trip because i only know what i know you only know what you know i know and but when you clash and you start talking and you start opening your mind I'm and you, the conversation starts rolling with the right people, boom, seven-figure idea. But you know what I mean? Like, start, it's, just, yeah, yeah. it's just insane. It's, it's yeah. hanging around with the right people. Yeah. Yeah. And I say this all the time on my social media and people just see, oh, Ryan's talking about networking again and it's boring <laughs> because they don't understand the power of networking. Like a network mm-hmm. alone will change your life. Yeah. Yeah. Look how, you know, us working together – is not only changing members' lives, but changing your lives yeah. in terms of what you now know. You now know Anna, you now know yeah. Alex, you know Reese, you know the videographers. Yeah. Like, yeah. You know members that are doing well. So it, look how it just yeah. everyone benefits and from the network. And you've all got you know? the same vision of bettering your life through not trading your time for money. That's no. all. That's what you know yeah. all members want to do. So when you're in a community that are doing that, you're not talking about, you know, oh, I need to get an extra job or, you know, I'm going to have to work evenings to make money. Oh, they popped like, out yeah. this morning. Yeah. Or I'm going to have to do something dodgy to, you know, it's, it's go on a holiday. Like, that's not where we're at. We're all like, no, you can make money online. Yeah. How how are you going to do it? What product are you going to sell? And we're all in the environment and we all want to help everyone and mm. we'll all we do all enjoy everything. Doing it. Yeah, yeah, we, we all, all enjoy, enjoy it. Helping. I know, that's, yeah. that's I think the lovely thing as well, that we genuinely enjoy that's because we're members win you guys win yeah yeah 100 yeah. um, percent yeah. and i think people's got uh as again uh speaking about obviously what what successful is people's got to separate themselves from the branding people get too attached to the branding because it's they're building up from the ground up sometimes you'll come you will see many websites mm. and we'll go i don't I, I don't know why you've even tried advertising that i don't <laughs> know what you're advertising it looks like yeah. a bit of like aldi and stuff like yeah, that yeah and we'll, we'll look into it and we're like but they'll they'll go to oh yeah but it's really good and like look I've got this and I've got that but I get you proud of it and look I'm I'm glad you're enthusiastic about it but sometimes take yourself away from the situation mm-hmm. look at it more with a critical eye is your email marketing are you email emailing the right people is your put sometimes you'll see emails come through to you and like the uh, the punctuality is wrong in it you're thinking you're emailing on a professional level yeah but I've emailed hundred people. You've emailed a hundred people with the full stops wrong, the commas yeah, wrong. Yeah, yeah. So I think sometimes you've taken a step back and obviously being self-critical. Well, like I said, speaking to an expert because without being arrogant, I said, "Oh, we're the best," and with this, we could probably look into something because we do see common mistakes and we see common issues quite often. We'll look into it and go, "Okay, yeah, this is what you're doing. This is what you're doing wrong." Okay, so don't we speak about leveraging your time a lot of the time then five minute conversations or then 10 15 minute conversations you have with an expert will leverage you for five hours because you'll probably be going around in circle also i think it's really important to understand that we've all been there as far as i'm aware like none of us have come from money none of us have like just been given money we've all been there we've all been there we've all failed as well exactly we've We've all all failed failed. and there's so many times (laughs) where like members message me and they're like oh you know and i'm feeling a bit deflated or whatever and i can relate to them because i've I've been there. Mm. Like I know how it feels. But that's mainly but mindset, though, isn't it? Mindset, it's, yeah. it's yeah. because they they don't in your nine to five you don't fail really. Do no, you, you so, don't. No. Well, you're getting paid. You're getting paid, and, and that's it. But it is a part of the process, and it is like making you stronger every day to deal with what it takes to run a business, yeah. what it takes to like all the things we're talking about here, marketing, social media, yeah. branding, B2B, like how can one person manage that? And, and the thing is, you, 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 this is where, you know, it takes a lot of um, understanding from our point of view, because where a member would so-called, you know, say it's failed mm. or not failed is the word they use. But if a member was to say, oh, it's really not working mm. out. 
Yeah. When we look into the issue, it literally could be Facebook have restricted them and they need to upload ID. Yeah. And you yeah. look at that and you think, hang on a minute, how are you feeling that? But then you have to remind yourself, hang on a minute, they, I felt deflated when yeah. Facebook yeah, yeah, first yeah, restricted yeah. me. Yeah. So you have but to imagine, be, you have to relate I, with them. It's because, funny you say that because I can remember I can remember that happening to me and being like, oh my God, <laughs> my this, is the, e- this is the end of the world. But Anna, yeah. just upload ID. Yeah, because I... I knew nothing about Facebook ads Mm. and that was when I was like, I need to look into an agency to start managing my ads for me. And like another thing that I say to members as well, like the amount of money I wasted investing into people that I thought were going to help me that actually Mm. was shit at what they do was like... Oh, it was so disheartening because I was, you know, working my job, saving up my money to invest into my business Um, And there were people that didn't really know what they were doing. Whereas if you're a member, like when you're investing your money, you know you're investing it into people that know what they're doing. They've got credibility and it's lessening that risk. But look how much you've learned from that. Look how much you've learned now. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I wouldn't change it. Exactly. And now you've gone from like a newbie to an expert where yeah, I know yeah. no one else better at branding than yourself. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, and without those obstacles there, you may never become the person you are today yeah, or yeah. have the knowledge no, you no, have today. 100%. It makes you struggle, like you say. But most people, the obstacles they hit are, are such basic obstacles yeah. that we look at it like, to me, I don't even see it as an obstacle. I see it as just, okay, that's happened. Upload your ID. Well, button, every, the every time you get an obstacle, it's like... Okay, I'm one step closer. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah one absolutely. step closer there. Don't see it. It's That's the same with thing. the no's on um, emails. Yeah, yeah. I yeah. embrace getting no emails, as in they don't want your product. But I'm, again, with with the no's, it's and reverting back to, to sales. You you quickly you have to quickly learn that your attitude has to be a hundred percent at every door. Mm. If I went, if I got a no. And I, I'm probably going to get. I knock on a hundred doors. I'm probably going to get ninety-five no's, maybe fifty of them are going to slam it in the face. Who wants to speak to a debt yeah. salesman? Same as emails. You may say a thousand emails, but if you're writing the emails, and you may like, oh, your attitude might change. You might get this out, and then you can see that in the text that you're yeah, using. Absolutely, you yeah. can see that in the in the way that I'm going to a door. Yeah. But I've got to think they're going to say, yeah, this mm-hmm. one's going to be a sale. It's like they're going it's to do like yeah, yeah, people yeah. when they message like, oh, you know, um, I've emailed you know, a lot of people, I'm not really getting much response. And I'm like, okay, so how many people have you met? Oh, about, you know, 10, 20. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, right, That's wait till you that. get to about, uh, yeah, yeah, the, the hundred. Then we get there. To flip side, what you were sorry, uh, saying there is the hundred no's. Okay, but then when you get that one yes, well, then you then work out what, how many no's each time does it take to get a yes? So then you can learn, okay, yeah, it's because yeah. I've done cold calling before. So similar you know, right, every yeah. 100 phone calls I've got to make, I'm going to go into them as I normally would, but I know every 100 I'll get one sell. Yeah. But, same, the, same. but the difference with how you do B2B, Alex, is one yes can change your life. And you have yeah. to remember that. How, yeah. many, like, like I, how many members have come in and literally, not setting people's expectations super high here, by the way, but how many members have literally reached out to the first person and it's been a 150K deal, 50K a month for the yeah. first three months, yeah. the first yeah, person yeah. they've reached out to. And this is where the issues start with with maybe, a, say, another member will look at that and think, oh my God, I just send out five, 10 emails. Yeah. I, I make 150 <laughs> grand, but it doesn't work like that. But just going off what you're saying, and, uh, um, Anthony and Alex, door to door cold calling is different to how we do B2B, you know? Yeah, so like door to door cold calling is putting effort and being rejected. Like in B2B companies, if they're not interested, they're not going to respond to your email. Yeah. It's simple no. as that. Yeah, so yeah. you don't really feel as dejected. Yeah. A prime as you would. example of that is, um, I can remember we had a conversation and you were like, Anna kind of, you know, aim, you know, aim in the middle, you know, smaller brands to begin with. I went straight in, contacting Harrods. I remember you went straight to the top. I can't believe Um, it. (laughs) However, I got a response from the buyer of Harrods who then introduced me um, to... The Glossy Bot? uh, Yeah, but they're a chain, aren't they? I forgot what their chain is called now. Yeah, it's a cosmetic group. Anyway, and she put me in touch with her. I then had a Zoom meet with someone which got us into Glossy Box and Sephora. So although, okay, I didn't get into Harrods, but it opened up massive opportunities for other 
B2B It deals. just shows that that's a prime example of working smart, not hard. Yeah. Yeah. How many people out there work their ass off? And I say this quite often, every single day in a daytime job, we're in a bricks and mortar business. Yeah. And people that work smart will always get paid a hundred times more than these people that work their ass off. It's just a, it, it's once again, it's like, it's not what you know, it's who you know. Yeah. So it's connecting, which, which is what addicts is doing with members and changing their yeah. lives. It's connecting the members and their brands and their products to the right people within the right business. Yeah. You know, like, you, uh, but most people won't know that in no. B2B. They won't know. How, that- how crazy is it though, that we're in a world where we can speak to the buyer of Harrods, yeah. the buyer of Selfridges, like that can open doors, like all from through, a phone all, or a laptop, all from yeah. the comfort of you our own home. Like to, <laughs> it's nuts for when anyone you think who, about who it, has never it? used a platform like LinkedIn, but there's other social media platforms as well. You can still do this, but LinkedIn <laughs> is the one I use. You can speak to a key decision maker, i.e., a director, manager, procurement, buyer, whatever mm-hmm. the buzzword is of any pretty much any company in the world mm. what other way can you do this you try picking up a phone or a cold email to a company like harrods well, yeah. you're just not and gonna... even if they replied to say no it's like they've actually re- no. you know like yeah. you're Celebrate in the comfort the of your yeah. own home it's, yeah. it's like yes. oh my god they've replied they've said no but, but i don't yeah. care but you've done this in the way we approach yeah. things it's not just a straight up sales email it's like right how do how can yeah. you put me through to the right person? And, and they're likely to help you, then, yeah, which is and what happens to you. Also, um, being really clever with it as well. It's not just sending the email. It might be following them on LinkedIn, commenting on their posts, following them That's on it. Instagram, yeah. mm. being a bit stalkerish. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I found <laughs> it works. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, Turn it, up work, the it hat. works though like, <laughs> because you don't. Yeah. You know, less. we think, oh my god, it's the buyer of Harrods, but that's a real person. They're just a human. Mm. So when they're human. like, oh my god, you know, oh I've got an email of them. Oh they're they're commenting on my post on LinkedIn. Oh yeah, they're just like yeah. my post on Instagram. Uh, Who is this? I've, I've, sorry, sorry, Alex, go on. I was just going to say, I feel LinkedIn is so underrated as well. I think like so many people that I've met doing B2B that aren't members of change, yeah. I feel, you know, they're, they're doing it through like Instagram with bad content. And they're not, when I say LinkedIn, they go, oh, I've never thought of that. And it's like, if you look at Gary V recently, you know, Gary V is talking so much about LinkedIn because Gary V's identified that LinkedIn is such an underrated platform. Everyone's mm-hmm. buzzing over TikTok and everyone's buzzing over IG and YouTube and Shorts. But nobody's really focusing on LinkedIn, yeah. and that's where the gold is when it comes to B two B. Because when you look at the, statist- the statistics that you usually put out there, Alex, is it, is it like ninety four percent or ninety five percent of businesses are situated on LinkedIn? Yeah, it's, it's, it's a stupid amount of. It's, it's almost everyone. Yeah. Why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you yeah, use it if yeah. you're if you're trying to sell your product mm-hmm. to another business? Why wouldn't you use the platform that's got the biggest success rate? I had a yeah. phone call with a guy about two weeks ago. He was interested in going into the inner circle membership, and apparently he was already in B two B. And he said to me, Ryan, I'm really experienced in B2B. I know what I'm doing. I haven't made loads of money, but confident I'm going to make money. I just want to hang around with uh, uh, you know, a bunch of guys that are similar to myself. And I said, okay, cool. I said, what's your LinkedIn looking like? He said, LinkedIn. He said, I don't use LinkedIn for a bit. Straight away, look, 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 look. you don't know everything yeah. about yeah. B2B. And I said this openly to him, you know, like we do with all members, we don't give anyone any bullshit. We want to teach you how to make yeah. money. Transparent, yeah. So yeah, I was like, bro, or let me get you on a call with Alex. If you're going to go in a circle, let me get you on a call with Alex. He'll open up a whole new world yeah. for you. And another thing, it is very, very different selling B2B as an employee with no risk, not really knowing too much about the brand um, or the risks yeah. of the business than actually owning your own business mm. and selling that product to another business. Yeah. Because when you're a, you're an employee... It's quite casual, isn't it? Yeah. Regardless whether you sell or not, you're getting you paid. Get paid. I yeah, guess yeah, unless yeah. it's commission based, but it's probably not going to be that detrimental to you. Yeah. But when it's your own business, it's a very, very yeah. different. But the to caveat there, when you're dealing with say procurement or a buyer of another company, the beauty of that is it's not their money either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. they're very likely <laughs> yeah. to just have a chat with you and spend yeah. the company's money. So from yeah. a from a um, seller's point of view, it's a good scenario if you're then dealing with I a can, buyer. I can remember um, my first B2B Zoom call and I was shitting myself. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, I don't know what to 
expect what to expect, but she was just, <laughs> just so human. casual, so yeah. normal. Just an employee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Literally, I was able to be myself, like you know, mm. just I, with a dream, really. But so, on a flip side of that, from your side, and um, just had it with another member, um, Ollie. When you it is your product, you know everything about your product. Yeah. And the beauty of that is when you then approach other companies and you see, let's just say, a competitor, you know exactly right how much they're selling it for, what's their USPs. So you can go to that owner and go, Why you've got that? I can supply exactly the mm -hmm. set. Well, I can supply you USP, USP, USP of this product mm -hmm. for slightly cheaper. Well, it's a no brainer for them because yeah. they're getting five times a better product You've for a little bit research. cheaper because yeah. you know not, your product. Yeah, yeah. yeah you it's know your not business. just also undercutting, but sometimes that's why it's important that your brand looks different. So I know um, with some of the businesses that I worked with, they were selling the same product that I was selling, but they wanted me on board within their business because my brand looked different. Mm. So it's like if, say, for example, you're selling a shower gel, but you really stand out from the shower gels that they're already selling, they'll want you on as well. Because it's like, oh, this is something well, different. You said it earlier. The chances of you coming up with a brand new product or business or service that's never been done before are very limited. Yeah. Now, it can happen, but it's very limited. So how are you going to make yours different? What is your yeah. USP? Okay, and then it's getting that point across, and then like you said, and there. obviously, your how, brand. how would yeah, your yeah, brand. Go on, Anthony. I, I was gonna say, I think like I said, the 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 most important thing is and, like the the whole topic of our conversation, the podcast. Like I said we'll we'll probably revert back to it. Is that your personality is your brand, hundred percent. You have to build, and you have to believe in your own brand. You have to be critical of your own brand. Be somewhat self-aware that you may not have the perfect brand to start off with. No one's gonna have the yeah. perfect brand. Ben Francis, billionaire Gymshark owner, made 16 companies before Gymshark. And so for that, so you're not going to make the perfect brand the, the first time. Mm. Um, but I think, like I said, the key takeaways from from what we've all tried to discuss, and like I said, is, is that you speak to the experts. We'll try and put you in the right direction. We'll leverage your time. We'll help you with the branding element. We're from a non-biased point of view because we want you to succeed. Mm. I think just going off the back of what you're saying there, I agree and disagree. I agree that it's going to take time, like I always say. But I disagree if a member was to go to Anna, as an example, they would get their brand done properly first time around. Their brand will be correct. They'll have a target audience. Yeah. You know, they have a solid plan there. But once again, that's just your network. I think if you're just talking about people in general that go and create a brand, maybe watching videos on YouTube yeah. or, or listening to people with zero credibility. But what, it's funny, what that person yeah. needs to do first is notice where they need the assistance. Mm -hmm. But that's yeah. the same as Anthony as well. It's, it's the marketing. It's funny you, know? you say that because I can remember in my journey, like it's one really lonely. Like, mm. and a lot of the times when I look at new members coming on board, I'm like, oh, God, I wish I had that. Yeah. God, I wish I could just book a Zoom with Look someone. Look at the meetups and be, that we're doing the community. Yeah. That's, that's and like, I spent like things, yeah. four years being, you know, and most people lonely, do know, Anna. going through struggles, thinking, like what I said, thinking I'm getting the help. Oh my God, I finally found someone that can do this for me. Yeah. No, they can't. Yeah. Like, you know, and the great thing about this community is when you're coming in, you're speaking to people that have been there, you're investing your money with people that you're going to get your return on and you've got a much better chance of, one, succeeding a lot more quicker and just being safe and not mm. and also, like, your mental health as well, what not Ryan feeling lonely. is the transparency because I know everyone at this table, we all do it, if we don't agree with a certain route or what we think you're doing, we will tell you that for yeah, yeah. your own self. Not probably because, a bit too much. Yeah, yeah. maybe. <laughs> maybe but they don't listen all the time. <laughs> no, we tell but, like, for example, if I don't believe in that product's going to work, I will tell you that because yeah. I want you to put your time and resources to a place where it's going to work. I'm not going to say, yeah, do, you know, like some agencies out there or some services will do, they will just go live just to get that 
deal or they go try and get that uh, money. It's also our credibility that we yeah. that if if you want me to market this product, I, I have to believe in the product as well. Um, but I think like with what Anna said there about the community, and obviously I think that's summed up perfectly to end on. Before we start, we could go on yeah. for hours. Yeah. Um, I think obviously speaking about the community and obviously the value that we have within the experts, not only the experts but the members. Like I said, the, the retreats that we run. Mm. Uh, some of my favourite times, obviously when we meet up and stuff like that. We got the one coming up in Kent. Um, but yeah, I think like I said, just ending on that 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 wholesomeness that Anna has said there, obviously like er eradicating the Everyone loneliness and building the, the brand. Same vision. And I, I talk so to people good. every day that that say I've had this business for three years, and I'm like, okay, cool. Like, who have you worked with? No one. And I'm like, and I'm straight away in my head is this is why you are where you are. Yeah. You know. Um. But I, I get it. At the same time, people can be led down the wrong path. Like you've mm. gone down some wrong paths, and yeah, it does become disheartening. You just think, oh, is everyone just out there to? Yeah. So I get it, it but. Obviously, our community speaks for itself, and um, I, I truly believe with what I've said throughout this, this podcast is your network is your net worth. Yeah. And if you hang around with, with the right people, if you get the right support, you know, if you ask questions, Anthony, do you think this product will be out? Is going to do well with marketing, Alex? I'm looking at this. Do you think it's going to work in B2B? And you're going to get the no BS approach. And I just yeah. feel so many more people out there that have drive and ambition will become so successful in e-commerce if they had that support and that guidance. Yeah. Let's wrap this one up here, guys. Yeah. We could go on and on. Thanks for coming through to the podcast. No, awesome. Cheers, guys. Thank you. Thanks.